Hello, everybody. You have tuned in to the Indiana State Police Roadshow. I'm your host, Sergeant Rich Myers from the Indianapolis District 52 Public Information Office. And we thank you for joining us each and every week. We are brought to you each and every week by the Indiana State Police Alliance and Cops for Kids, a subsidiary of the Indiana State Police Alliance. We continue. We thank them for their continued support of this show. And we thank Tom Triel for coming in and putting us on YouTube every week. And uh, we've got everybody to thank. We've got to thank Jason for being here today. Jason. Trooper Jason Alford from District 52 uh, Special Operations now. Yes. Good. Well, thanks for being in here. Not a problem. I appreciate you. Not a problem. You're supposed to say thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> Jason and I go way back. Jason, you've uh, you've got kind of a, a history, a unique history of your past. You were, uh, you're a chief warrant officer in the Army? I am. Okay. Yes. How, tell us how that started. Uh, I joined the Army active duty uh back when i graduated high school and spent six years or so on active duty and where were you where were you based at oh a little pl- bit of everywhere uh well, where did you do your basic at fort benning uh yeah. fort bragg fort knox korea fort hood over those six years um i got out uh got in the guard part-time for a little while while i was still living in texas uh and then uh, got out completely until after 9-11. I couldn't watch it on TV uh-huh. and not do something, so I got back in part-time. And now I've got over 18 years total service. So Going for that 20. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> got to stay in there for the 20, definitely, right? Yes. Because um, you've got six kids. <laughs> yes, I have you, six kids. You're going to have to stay in there, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And find any other job you can come along, maybe McDonald's, Hardee's, anything else <laughs> down the line, right? Anything with food that you can bring home. That's right. <laughs> when Jason deer hunts, it's not for pleasure, right? That's right. It's for food. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason we got Jason in here today is uh, something that's kind of unique to the state police, something that's never been done per se for what we're doing here is uh, uh, explosive canines but we've had those with the capitol police before but tell us how this come about uh, to be we've got some state troopers with them now uh we do we have three in the state uh one north one central one south um all three of us are also hazardous devices technicians or bomb techs um, and we're full-time with the eod team now doing that and the canine handling for the explosive detection dogs so you guys are full-time uh Special operations with uh, SWAT, ERT, as they're known, and EOD, and um, this is what you do full time now. Yes. So, what were you doing uh, prior to that? Do you? Uh, how did you become involved in the in the EOD team to begin with? Um, I was a regular road trooper uh, for several years. Um, Working where? Uh, I was originally out of Pendleton okay. until. The districts shifted around mm-hmm. several years ago, and then I was in Indianapolis. The realignment? Yes. Okay. Um, I've been on the TIP team, which is our riot control team. Um, I've also done our meth suppression stuff. Uh, both of those were obviously part-time. And when I got back from Iraq, my shift partner at the time, Fred Shock, yeah, he was on the bomb squad. He encouraged me to apply, and that's how I got on the bomb squad. And between your tutelage and sergeant yeah. lynn langland's tutelage i'm now a full-time bomb tech so, so you applied and became a in the ors with what we generally start out with yes and how long were you doing that mm, probably three years or so okay. I was, uh the eor program which, which is explosive ordnance reconnaissance go ahead and explain what that uh, is basically uh the eors uh can do everything but render safe a device uh we train ours very well uh, so that they're extremely knowledgeable in explosives and how to set up all of our equipment, x-rays, and what have you. They're generally, and, and most often, the right-hand man, the the right-hand person of that tech, and they're uh, very much involved as far as uh, producing the x-rays, setting the x-rays up, setting the pan disruptor up, uh, donning the bomb suit. So they know everything there is to know, and they've been in the bomb suit. They know what it's like to feel that bomb suit on and and know how to watch that bomb tech. So they're very, very much up on it. And I've always said, and maybe you feel this way also, that it's a very important information to have and I think gives us a heads up when we do go to tech school at Hazardous Devices School. Absolutely. It's also nice for me personally when I'm on a 
uh, situation where I'm working on advice to have other knowledgeable people there to pick their brains in case I forget or miss something right. here or there. It's yeah, you can't have too many people look on. There's over no or such thing as knowing everything in the yeah. <laughs> improvised explosive world. <laughs> yeah, it's always better to have a second opinion or somebody else there to to bounce ideas off of. And then. yes, so you were the EOR for three years. Uh, uh, I'm assuming a tech position came available. You applied for. Yes, um, I applied. Um, you guys accepted me uh, conditionally. I went to Hazardous Devices School down in Redstone. Uh, that's actually been almost three years ago now, too. So uh, you'll be going back again. Yep, so I'll be we going back for years. research here shortly. And um, I've been doing uh, the part-time tech up until July of this year, and that's when I uh, got assigned the dog and went full-time. So... Uh, the the assignment of the dog how does that work out what it, how do they decide hey this dog is going to be good for finding bombs um the biggest thing that i've noticed and i'm obviously just starting with the canine program um is their drive they need to have a very high drive um, we actually went through quite a few dogs uh to get the three that we ended up with and we ended up with three really good dogs um but their main thing is their drive mm -hmm. uh, for the reward system, basically. Right. Uh, working for them is like playing a game, playing hide-and-seek, so to speak, uh, with the dogs. And when they find something, they get rewarded for it, and that's what they live for. And that's kind of what they do on almost anything, isn't it? In, on the drug dogs, on the on the on on those canines also? Yes. Um, obviously, most of my experience is with the explosive uh, detection right. canines. But, um, yeah, the uh, narc dogs also work for reward system. Uh, so your dog, what kind of dog do you have? I have a German Shepherd. Okay. How old? He's about a year and a half old now. And his name? Chief. Wow. <laughs> for Chief Warren? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, assume you picked that name or was there? I did. A... Yeah, I picked okay. that name. Okay. I didn't know if the kids had anything to do with that. or No, no. Do they like it? Do they get along with the dog? Oh, yes. Yes. He gets along very well with the kids. Which so is a it good stays thing. at your house? He lives at home, yes. Okay. You have a kennel or inside? Yep. Uh, yeah. The state police uh, put kennels up at our houses, so that's where he stays. Now, does he go with you every day? Yeah. Okay. So he's out and about all the time. Mm -hmm. the, the training, um, where, did it, where did it take place at? Um, there's multiple locations throughout the country for that uh the three of us went to evansville um to top dog canine training down there okay with uh, john holler and this consisted of um mainly uh teaching them the odors um of the explosives that we use uh, okay. on a regular basis and um us working together as a team you That's, and the dog yeah right um, it's not just taking a dog for a walk. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a lot more to it than you uh, might realize until you get into it. Well, again, you've tuned into the Indiana State Police Roadshow. Sergeant Rich Myers with District 52 Public Information Office. I've got uh, uh, Trooper Jason Alford with the uh, Indiana State Police Special Operations Group. He's with the EOD K-9 unit of, uh, of the Indiana State Police, and we're talking about his canine that he's uh, just recently, how long have you had it now? How long have you been certified? Um, we graduated at the end of October. Okay. Uh, so so you guys are just kind of getting your feet wet now right, and learning we're, each we're other here. basically brand new. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, when you are down there training and, and you're getting used to each other, um, are you staying together 24-7? Is that dog with you yes. in your in yeah. the room? And he so. stayed in the hotel room with me and... Uh, he got very spoiled. <laughs> He's getting used to you as you're yes, getting used to right. Him. We're getting work, uh, used to working together, um, but we're doing pretty good. Um, now, does this include any obedience training when you do this, or how does that work out? Our school, we started out with very minimal obedience. Uh, the trainers down there wanted the explosive dogs to be very independent uh, so that they could go in and walk, just walk into a room, and if there's something there, they'll find it. With that, with minimal input from the handler. Okay. Um, now we are training them with some basic obedience uh, stuff along the way, but the main thing in our school was to get them to find the odor, alert us 
to what it was and for us to work together. How many owners are you are you working with? Uh, we initially started with 26, and I continue to add to that yeah. on a daily basis almost. Oh, I'm sure it's never ending, <clears throat> training well, all the time. It, older explosives smell different than newer explosives. Some have been contaminated with other types of explosives. So you, there's really almost an unending supply of different explosive odors that you can train on. When you... I know when some of our dogs that we have work in the road with the troopers, the canines that are trained to find drugs, they're also cross-trained to protect that trooper or some people call attack dogs or whatever, but self-protection on that. Is that true with our canines on that side of the house? No, the explosive detection dogs are not trained uh, for any of that. Why is that? Um, that's just the route that we went on these dogs. Of our previous um, explosive detection dogs are strictly for explosive use uh, also. And I'm, I'm assuming, too, probably that uh, these dogs are utilized a lot in crowd situations and a yeah, lot of people and are going to be around them. So Just like at my house, they're around little kids quite a bit. Uh, we do a lot of programs at elementary schools and that sort of thing, and we're in crowds almost all the time when we're working. So any type of aggressiveness in one of our explosive dogs is probably a bad thing. Yeah, yeah, and I don't think... Uh, <clears throat> They're not going to be protecting you uh, out there. Right. They're not going to be working the street like the trooper that has the canine working the street right. is. So it would be good because you do a lot of I'm, – I know Dave Pointer and those in the past, Mike and, and John, uh, mm-hmm. have done Colts games, uh, mm-hmm. Pacers games, um, events downtown. So you're going to be around a lot of important people. We do um, a lot of special events, large sporting events, People may not see us because we're usually there early, mm-hmm. but uh, we are at most major events in the state mm-hmm. uh, with our bomb dogs. How long is, can a dog do this? Um, I've been told between eight and ten years, uh, depending on their health. Okay. And then how long can you expect a dog to uh, – if you've got a big gymnasium, a school or something like mm-hmm. that, how long can you expect that dog to work? Is, is the weather make a difference or – Well, dogs are – Kind of like people in that respect. Um, they may have a bad day and not really right. want to work very well. Um, but then they may have a really good day, um, and they'll be able to last a half hour, 45 minutes before they need a break. Okay. Uh, and, and that really takes a lot out of them to work that long uh, because they're really working hard. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know one thing that uh, Mike Sarche has always said, uh, told me when we've done programs together and stuff is is what makes dogs unique is is if somebody in the house is cooking a, a stew you know we smell the stew but mm-hmm. the dog smells the potatoes the meat the green beans the different odors that are yes. in there so that's why we can utilize them for these different odors that's are that they're searching for yes that, that's amazing that they can do that so when you do we have a further program coming up is this kind of where we're at now or how's this looking um, as far as more dogs being added or is this right now? I think we're, um, kind of leveling off right now. Okay. It'd be nice to add more. Um, I mean, you know, we're oh, yeah. all, always busy, um, yeah. uh, to the point where they just added the three of us. Um, it would not surprise me to see us add more down the road. Good. Good. We can always use more help on EOD, right? Absolutely. And if you're needed, uh, Call the district, call the post. How does that work out? Absolutely. Call the post, uh, request the EOD team. Um, and that's statewide. That's Just statewide. Call your local state police post. Yes. Because you've got, who's, who's got the one down south? Uh, Dan Smith. Okay. Trooper Dan Smith is down south. and uh, Up north? I believe he's a master trooper now, uh, Derek Fisher. Okay. Good. Up north. And we go all over the state. Uh, Good. All right. So. Well, again, you've been listening to the Indiana State Police Roadshow. I'm Sergeant Rich Myers from District 52 uh, Public Information Office. We want to thank the Indiana State Police Alliance for uh, helping us out and sponsoring this. They help out on the canine programs a lot. And they I do. Think they still do. They do a lot for the canine program. Yeah. yeah. So thank you in two ways. I want to thank Tom again for uh, helping us get on YouTube here. Thanks off camera there, Tom. Tom's waving at me. <laughs> appreciate you being here. We appreciate everyone listening in. Make sure that you uh, listen to us next week for our next show. We want to um, thank Jason. Jason, thanks for coming in and being with us. Not a problem. And you'll be back, I'm sure.
Absolutely. All right. Make sure you buckle up. Keep those kids buckled up. It's the best way of safety you got to travel. Bye-bye.